Yeah. This is not about a stadium. This is not about a one-day event. This is about a glory move of God. That was the last time this city had revival. But think about it for a second. For one six six years, saints like us have been crying to And guess what? You are an answer to prayer. Welcome everybody to another episode of Breaking Bread where I sit down with believers of every tribe, tongue, and nation to understand how their life is making an impact for the kingdom of God. Today I have a very special guest with me, Solomon Ikwiwu. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and just let the people know who you are, how you came to Christ, very briefly. Well, thank you, Diego Lucero. I, I love your ministry. I want to honor you and what God is uh, doing in and through your life and just around your circle. And uh, I just want to thank God for your life and you're an inspiration and, and I love your ministry. Uh, my name is Solomon Equivo. You said my last name so well. I am a husband, a father, a uh, child of God, lover of Jesus. And of course, uh, God is doing some incredible things in my life and through my life, but it didn't start today. I'm a PK. If you watch, you don't know what a PK is. I'm a pastor's kid. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. My dad is a, he's a missionary pastor. Uh, he's traveled the nations and, uh, you know, growing up as a child in Nigeria, I lived in Nigeria for 14 years. People don't always uh, believe me when I tell them. The first 14 years of my life was in Nigeria. And I saw my dad travel all the time. I, my mom is an intercessor. You know, I remember my childhood. My mom knew how to pray. Wow. You know, she gave me to the Lord in such a young age. I was a sick child. As a child, I was always uh, sick. And, and, uh, but God had a plan. I came to Canada. Fast forward, I came to Canada uh, back in 98. And uh, my God, uh, you know, just I remember coming to this nation. I thought this was the heaven I've always heard about. Right, very diverse, a beautiful nation, uh, you know, and, and I, of course, made some poor decisions. You know, it is, uh, I was just saying to someone recently, uh, it is possible to have saved parents, hmm. saved family, and you yourself, you're not saved. Wow. It is possible to go to church and not be in Christ. I was a person, I had a, Parents who were saved, they were on fire for the Lord. Uh, I was around pastors, pastors' kids, you know, Christian friends. Uh, went to church on Sundays, went to conferences. I didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, right? Uh, okay. You know, uh, salvation is personal, but it's not private. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, of course, uh, I lived in a world, party, drank, and... Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I was a very religious person, right? right? Uh, you know, you've heard it said before, Christianity is not a religion, it's relationship, yeah, right? Yeah, right. And, and uh, but thank God that uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. In time, uh, there was always the Lord knocking on the door of my heart. And uh, of course, I don't want to say that I found him, he found me. Thank God for Jesus, he found me. And, uh, and, and it was the rest was history. I... The Lord found me in college. I went to Humber College, for those of you that don't know Humber College, and in my college, there were two students club that were in revival. You know, one group was an Asian-led uh, ministry. They literally evangelized the college. The other ministry was very discipleship-focused. Uh, so I was eaten from both learning how to evangelize and intercession with the other guys. These guys knew how to pray. Every Sunday they would do prayer walks around the school. Wow. If I, I mean, initially, I, when I first met these guys, I thought they were a bit too intense. But in time, I came to understand that these guys were on fire for Jesus. Uh, then the other guys uh, that were very discipleship focused, the pastor knew how to teach Bible. Wow. It was through this ministry, shout out to Pastor Trevor, Embassy Ministry, that was where I would say I fell in love with Jesus because this guy knew how to explain Bible wow. in such a way that was so applicable. And so God had me in this ministries. Looking back, I understood that to be a revival. Our college had revival. Wow. And this ministry had been planted there for about 10 years and just plundering hell to populate heaven. Uh, eventually, 
the Lord, I, I got touched by the Lord. I started my own Christian club in college. We did events, events in college. And uh, it was very unique what God did. And uh, my heart for soul winning and, of course, discipleship. You know, obviously, Humber College was my Gethsemane. It was my place the Lord really met me. Wow. And uh, so, and uh, praise God, you know, so I don't take credit for it. Praise God, he came after me. And I'm so glad that, you know, today I look back that he's called me to be a CEO, a Christ-empowered official. So I praise God for what he's doing. Actually, that was around the time frame that I met you because I remember you were you were in college when I met you, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually had no idea because when I met you, I thought you had been walking with the Lord for several years. But uh, over the years, you know, when I tell somebody, hey, do you know Solomon? They're immediately like, yeah, the evangelist guy. So you've gotten to be known here in Canada as this evangelistic figure. I want to quickly talk about this new book that is coming out. It's called God Heal Our Land. You recently hosted an event in Hamilton, a stadium event, right? And when I think about Solomon, I think about an individual who is really uniting the church and the body of Christ through the Great Commission. And I got the chance to be at the event and serve. And I saw people of many different doctrines and denominations, and they were all gathered in this stadium event. Can you tell us a little bit about the heart behind this event? And what are some of the challenges or some of the wins you've seen of trying to bring unity to the church? You know, I look at a denomination's barrier. You look at the different doctrinal. It's not easy, of course. But unity is the very heart of God. You know, right. and, you know, John 17, you know, Jesus prayed a prayer that is not being answered yet. You know, he prayed that we would be one, right? So if you're not on the side of unity, you're against that prayer that was prayed by Jesus, and he gets whatever he wants from the Father, right? So that was my heart, of course, to unite the body of Christ, especially in this end time hour. We know that the Lord is coming back soon. For thousands of years, one prayer has been prayed for a long time. Uh, Maranatha, come Lord, right? We're in expectancy for the Lord to come back. So uh, praying, for, uh, praying for unity. We don't just pray for unity. We align ourselves to be answer to that prayer, that the church would come together in this time hour, that many people would just really encounter our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, uh, of course, that hard was just what, uh, the, the, of course, like I said before, uh, events was something that uh, before the Lord got a hold of me, I used to do events in the world, party events, right? And then, of course, uh, I, people sometimes say to me that I have a magnetic gift. It's a gift from the Lord. You know, so God is using that gift to draw people to himself. And uh, yeah, so the stadium event was amazing. Praise God you know, connecting with the pastors and the churches. You know, we're God's family here on earth, championing revival. We're God's family here on earth, championing reconciliation, right? God is in a family business, desire none should perish. So this is our heart to really see people from the GTA to the golden horseshoe encountering God, right? So GTA, where, I, where I'm from, you know, uh, you know, there was a time I was really just wanted to desire, Lord, what is my purpose here in the GTA? Right. And God gave me this understanding of the greater Toronto area to see it as go tell all. There was a flip. So now we have this mission to go tell all about Jesus, uniting the body of Christ for this end time harvest. So that was the heartbeat, uh, uh, the stadium events, the books that I write, uh, 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 the film that we produce. You know, God is a creator. As his children, he's made us creative, right? So, so praise God for what he's doing. So tell us a little bit about this event in particular. What went down there and what, what, what did you see? Yeah, so uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, 20, last year I ran for the mayor of my city. And uh, there's a verse in the Bible I love. It says, uh, when, the, when the righteous are in authority, the people that rejoice. When you're ungodly, you're in authority, the people that groan. In this time where in many people have been groaning, and, and I saw a moment I had to seize. I love this quote that says, the opportunity of a lifetime has to be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. You know, so it says, uh, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin destroys it. And I love this other verse that says, uh, where there's no vision, people perish. Right now, Canada, 
has no vision. This is why we're seeing a lot of people perishing. Right. So running for mayor, uh, uh, God did some incredible things. Running for mayor was a strategic evangelistic political assignment. God called me to, because before that, we hit the streets, we went everywhere, but of course, I like a bit of politics. And God began to show me how to reach a different audience, wow. right? So, so running for mayor, I was the only Christian that ran in my city, right? right? And in a city that has about 600,000 people, right. not one Christian stepped up, wow. but I saw an open door. You know, be careful what you pray for. I saw an open door and I stepped into it to be God's hand and feet. So, you know, so fast forward, uh, I went to my mayor debate okay. against the current mayor, a previous mayor, and it was a really awesome thing what God did. So this debate went back and forth and, uh, and towards the end of my mayor debate, God gave me a word for the candidates. Wow. What do you do, you know, political candidate uh, debate, the media, the media is watching you, audience is there. And God gives you a word. He gives you a prophetic word over the candidates. Yeah. Well, it was a it was a question. Okay. Because with uh, with a political debate, you're telling people what you can do for them if you win, right? Okay. And of course, a lot of false promises back and forth, and I was getting uh, irritated. Uh, of course, towards the end, I felt this strong impression in my heart. It was a question: Do you want God to heal the land? Wow. Initially, when I had that question, I was terrified. I'm not going to ask that question in my debate because my campaign is over. And then uh, the Lord gave me another chance because the MC said, does anyone have any question or comment left? Wow. That was my end. Yeah. And I asked the question, do you want God to heal the land? And there was a silent silence in the room. And I followed that question with a comment. Only Jesus can heal this land. One of the candidates uh, beside me said, Amen. The debate was over. Sometime later, after my, of course, I never, uh, I didn't become the mayor of the city. Right. Sometime later, the Lord was also asking me that question. Okay. It's a question he's asking every Canadian, asking every one of us, do we want God to heal our land? You know, I love the Canadian National Anthem. Mm -hmm. You know, I came to realize in this season that the Canadian National Anthem is a prayer. Many of us have prayed it, we've sang it, but it's a prayer. And I love the part that says, God, keep our land. Make it glorious and free. Right. But that is a, 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 we're asking God to keep our land, but God is saying back to us, I've kept my side of the deal. Have you kept yours? Wow. And then, uh, in other words, God keep our land. We're also asking him to keep, to, to, to heal our land. Thank you. So that began, of course, there was the uh, answer. Uh, my, my answer to that question was, yes, Lord. Uh, please, I want you to heal the land. I went in some time of prayer and God confirmed wow. through many people that it was him actually that gave me that question, right. confirmation. And of course, we stepped out in faith. Scripture tells us without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord, right? Stepped out in faith. And uh, we it was a three-month conversation with the stadium. Eventually, they gave us a place okay. and it was an answer to prayer. Wow. And it was almost kind of like I began to see the stadium, check this out. I began to see the stadium that has never had a stadium gathering since its inception, never before. I was seeing the, uh, the stadium as a jar. Was it Elisha? Elisha was to the widow uh, to, to find jars, right. right? And so this stadium was a type of jar because that was my fate for the Lord to fill up this place, right? And of course, we saw many people healed, signs and wonders, and uh, it was great to see what, you know, worship. And uh, of course, I believe we're seeing God, the healing of this nation has begun. And it's Canada's time and God is doing something unique. And what I found very impactful in the event is that there was a lot of people from the United States yeah. prophesying into Canada. There's something that God is doing here prophetically. And they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. Canada is about to experience an amazing harvest of revival of souls. Yeah. And we get to be part of that. So Solomon, I know that you're a very busy guy. Um, I actually got to um, intercept you here. We are at a conference, Daniel Kalenda. What did you experience today in this conference? I know that you are always trying to stoke the fire of your evangelistic gift. What did you get in impartation here? You know what, just, uh, just this hard for the harvest, right? We're in, we're in a crunch time. 2000 years ago, uh, 
Peter, you know, of course, the day of Pentecost, we heard him talk about this is that which the prophet Joe spoke about in the last days, young men with some visions, right? Dinah Kalenda, Dinah Kalenda, the successor of uh, uh, Ryan Bunke, of course, doing a, a fantastic job, just his visions for souls to be saved. You know, I was actually at the very last conference that was uh, here in the city of Toronto by Ryan Bunke. And I was there, I think it was about eight years ago. I was there when he wrote this word, Canada shall be saved. Powerful words. And I caught that word. And tonight we get to see some uh, strategic uh, uh, visions and ways that that has been implemented. Of course, we know Canada has been saved. But I love the, I love the calendar's heart for souls. And, uh, you know, I believe in this hour, it's all about collaboration and partnership. Right, multiplication, collaboration, partnership, yeah. and uh, Christ Foundation is a ministry that I love because they're going after souls, and and of course we must keep plundering hell to populate heaven. And what I love about the evangelistic gift is that we're really connectors yeah. between the fivefold ministers, right? Like we get to be the people that direct the church back to okay, let's go back to the Great Commission, let's all be united to this great mission that we have here on earth. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about. When is this movie and, and book coming out and how can they get a hold of it? Right now, the God Heal Our Land documentary film, it just highlights what God did in our stadium event and a lot of behind the scenes cool interview that I encourage everyone to watch this documentary. It's an extension of what God is doing. And then the book is also uh, the God Heal Our Land uh, book. It takes us back in the journey of Canadians' Christian uh, history. And then it brings us in uh, our darkest period in COVID. And then we take you on a 21-day devotional, Times of Refreshing. It's such a powerful book that features different uh, great men and women of God uh, in the nation. So uh, it'll bless you. Visit our website, GodHealOurLand.com. Remember, we're not waiting for a move of God. We are a move of God. Amen. Well, Solomon, thank you so much for being on the podcast. God bless you, brother. 